three people on. What's up guys, my name's Trevor. We're over at my dad's today making the cross project that I have had in mind. And so we just found an R2-D2 pencil. We're gonna rock it. <laughs> so anyhow, on making this cross, we discovered that you have to, so these are eight feet long from here all the way over there. And the ratio is one uh, to a third. So, for this eight foot vertical, we gotta have five feet of this other one to go horizontal. So we're measured out here. We're kind of jumping into this little weight, but there's our five foot mark. So we're gonna cut all of this extra off. And then what the plan will be is go right here in the middle at two and a half feet and notch this piece and then notch this and then uh put them together so we'll got we'll show you guys this uh process this is just an idea that came to me overnight probably i don't remember if it was his dream or what but i've wanted to make a cross similar to this so finally getting it done hopefully soon i'll find the field that it actually belongs in but until we get there, it's gonna go out into our field where we've been playing with Dora, the four wheel, or I mean the dirt bike, and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned. And if we need a little light, we got a little light. Sure, go. So a little switch. Okay, that little switch. <laughs> and just push it back. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, <laughs> you're right. I gotta loosen this because see now you'll feel the saw can come out. And so uh, you it through it after you get momentum. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> I can just push this all the way down and it'll go. Yes. Okay, so I don't have to like hold it. Yeah, you don't have to float it through. What is he trying to say? Oh. Desk. Desk? Test. Like the black thing. The black thing. A desk. A desk. No, like a, that. A black thing. I'm seeing desk too. We see. A desk. What do you do with it? Like um, look at it and like find a gun. A scope. A gun. A gun. A target. A Nerf gun. The targets that they no, shoot at. Like that. This. This. Res. Like. Go, come on, <laughs> hurry. Keep up. We'll figure it out. <laughs> the cross piece for the 10 foot yes. pose. So I'm going to turn that over a quarter turn. It'll flip it back up. Now let's find out about, <clears throat> you said possibly about two and a half feet. Yeah, two and a half feet. So now guys, we just, as you see, we got our cross uh, part cut. So it's two and a half <clears throat> feet there. So now we determine if that's the top or the center. So before we make any cuts, we can lay this.
cross piece on there and see if it needs to be centered. But let's find center of this board too real quick. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> Should be two and a half. So right here. Just shy, yep. It's come up to about two and five and seven eighths because the saw blade. Those are just a reference mark. So now if you took that and you crossed it with that one, and you just kind of look at it, so that's below the line. Yeah. Go ahead and center that on the post. And just let it balance there. And then just kind of step back and look at it. <clears throat> and see if that, proportionally, if that's... Because theoretically this will be... We're not going to be two and a half inches here. Or two and a half feet. We're actually going to consume some of it here. Like an inch and a half Inside. of it here, an inch and a half here. Right, right. So then that throws this out of proportion. So we need to move this up just a little bit. An inch and a half because of the inch and a half we're losing here and here. We need to lose it on that line and that line too. Right? Yeah. And then that then makes be... this proportion, these three proportional now, right? It's hard to tell the top one from here, but the sides look, look good. We can always measure that out to mm -hmm. 20 and a half. So we need to sh we need to shake it just About a little a bit longer. Yeah. Just a little bit. There we go. So now what I do is we have that kind of pinned down, right? Yep. So we're not necessarily square, but we want to go ahead and mark the underside of that. Same thing on this side. Uh oh. Fill this down or 2D2. Oh, this is a happy birthday one. Oh no. <laughs> now with that transitioned onto there, we know how wide it needs to be. to be. Yeah. <clears throat> but now we need to do the same thing here. With that guy. And put that in the center. So These let's measure really... let's measure this. Is it <clears throat> should be like close to four inches? Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Or three and yeah, about three and a quarter or three and three eighths. Three and a quarter. Okay. So now if we set that at center of three and a quarter, which will be inch and five eighths. Something like that. Then you can use yeah. your square to make those two lines. Then we know where we need to notch it. So this <clears throat> Let's scoop this out. Gracie's growling. <laughs> Don't leave me out here in the cold. Go in the sunshine, Gracie. She's such a nice. All right. Oh. Come on. Gracie, come on. Come on. Gracie. She can't see, she's gonna go into the doctor or into the vet. <clears throat> oh, bat her eye. See if they can do LASIK surgery, get her eyesight back. She's in incredible health. She's feisty and spunky for 12 years <laughs> old or 15 years old, however old she right. is. Right. Off this line, that looks more. 
Well, <clears throat> and this was, yeah. Although that was. That was just kind of a, <clears throat> we just had this setting down there. Right. So I'm trying to think, we may we need to shift it down. 28 and a quarter. Should be 28 and a quarter. quarter, but pretty close to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty close. Yep. That's, <clears throat> that's where these ones were, so that would be good. Okay, so now if we're three and a quarter here and here, right? I think it's right at three <clears throat> and a quarter. I think so. Right at three? Okay. Right at three and a quarter. And that that maybe that's why. That's I left that, that quarter one. off of there. That's why that one so it needs to be an one. eighth out. Go down though. Right. Uh, off of this line, it was gonna be at one and five eighths. That's so. That one's right. That's why this one's low. Yeah, because I didn't do it at the quarter. I did it right at the three. It's right there. Yep, just put an X on we'll it, we'll wipe it off. So <clears throat> that looks that looks better. Now you need to take those lines with your square and transfer them down the side on the two sides of the cross and the two sides of the vertical. <clears throat> and you only have to go halfway down. Then we have to measure to where it's gonna end. To where it's gonna be like three inches or whatever. I'll back my way just a little bit. There we go. Should I just draw them all the way down for now? You or? can, you can. I'm going a little past. That way you have the reference for the uh, handheld saw. And you gotta knock those in. Then go ahead and transfer close. these on. And this go too. <laughs> Always about getting that right angle. Now remember, <clears throat> our center mark that we had here, we're going to want to put that center mark Down here going too. vertical on those and so that was an inch on these five eighths. so that we know where to stop when we're chipping wood out. Horizontal, right? So there you go. Now just hook your tab up here and drop it down. That'll get you a little bit closer to the project. And mark your inch and five eighths. A couple of different. Go ahead and put it on both those lines and in the middle. <clears throat> and the reason being, when we flip that over, squared up. You'll be able to put your square on it. Now. You can still do it with just one mark. So let's watch your camera and we'll flip this over. You could still do it with one mark essentially because you could take your square here and put it at the two and five eighths mark, wherever that pencil mark is. Oh. And then you can literally just take your, and you can just literally just take your pencil. That's pretty dang close. And walk this with it 
Now this comes out. Yep. That's how we determine what comes out. And then of course this will all go away whenever you sand and varnish or whatever you desire. Right. Guess a little bit of woods class here. Go back to like middle school. <laughs> And then you just flip it over and do it again on the other side. I didn't think about using that to mark it. <clears throat> and find your... So there's our, oh, there's our two lines there. Kind of hard to show up on camera, but... Then we got to have inch and five-eighths? Yep, inch and five-eighths. And so... See it got into the here. grain there? And it walked off with it. We'll do the same thing to that one. So then we can notch them together. That looks proportional, about half, right? You guys tell us <clears throat> in the comments if it does. Even though we're going to cut it, <laughs> you can't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> then just transfer those over as well. Here's left side, and then top is on here. This is, yeah. Her face. Is like <clears throat> and that, these little notches right here too, you can use those use to help those keep your pencil it. straight. If you can transition that line over to it. Right. So we're gonna go two, five, eight, so maybe that one. Too hard to tell. But so this is the face, so we want to cut this half out. And this guy will be gone. And just remove those other marks so you don't... there walk through that the through grain the grain, huh? yeah yeah <clears throat> so now now we got to figure out <clears throat> you got a couple of options you can use a handheld cirque saw and set your depth on your saw blade to that exact depth. You can adjust that arm saw to do that as well, but I think a handheld would probably be just as well, which is right behind you over there. <clears throat> and we'll see what the actual depth is on that little one there of the blade. If it's not deep enough, then we'll have to go to the larger circular saw. <clears throat> so, We'll measure from the plate. I don't know if they can see that, maybe. You can measure from the plate down to the bottom edge of the blade, and it's literally about an inch and five eighths to the bottom of the teeth. So it's kind of like spot on. It's almost spot on, which that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, how does that? That was right? made to be. Yep. So, now, if you had to adjust it... <clears throat> Does it your plate move down? I think it's this one. That loosens and you flip it up and then you can adjust that blade. However, whatever depth you need that saw blade to be. <clears throat> but then you just make sure that you've got your X where you're going to be notching out. Is this little mark there where the blade lines at? Yeah, now you see the zero. So on the cut just on the inside because the blade will be the blade face this is yeah so you actually want to come to the inside so or come to the in, there you go so that little tongue sticking out will represent your saw blade does that make sense yeah that's how wide that saw blade is <clears throat> so. so you get that lined up on the other side of the board 
Just like that. And you pull your trigger and you kind of... Oh, is it just the trigger that is You have to push this thumb depressor down and pull the trigger at once. And okay. Then you'll have to see <clears throat> where your blade's touching the edge of the wood back here. Watch your eyeballs. Oh yeah, true that. Let me get them shades on. <laughs> and then, go ahead and rip across there. Unless the batteries are dead. <laughs> we almost made it. Love my Milwaukee tools, but boy howdy, there's a lot of dead batteries. That was a little today. off too. Yeah, now there's a other battery over there. You can just swap the battery out. Hi, Dad. Hi, bud. Okay, are we doing all right? Yeah. All right, awesome. Why is it taking forever? What's taking forever? Whatever you're doing. <laughs> <clears throat> now this will give you an opportunity to make up that line now that we see where it's going to cut and it, every tool is different so you're going to want to see what its personality is a little bit I think it was uh, I lost my line when I when this started going off of it yeah uh, So it would be best just to start back here again. Yep, just start over at the back and go ahead and reline yourself and look across it to make sure that you're kind of running your saw square or parallel to your line. You're going to want to twist with your wrist, just slightly. Make sure you run it all the way through. Let's see, look at your back side. Yeah, because it's not down all the way mm -hmm. like this one. Yep. Just and maybe solidly. I can trim a little more of that off of there. Yep. See, this is your center point. So anything that your saw passes mm -hmm. through, that's got to pass through the whole thing the too. The whole deal. That makes sense. <clears throat> oh, a little closer to it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Be a little tight. Well, and you kind of want it to be a little True, bit so that you can want it to <clears throat> get it to hold. Be loose. So <clears throat> now on this side, I want it to go on the other way. Yes. Because this is the width of my blade, so I want it to be right there. Let's go ahead and scoot all the way up to the touches.
Perfect. Oh, it's <clears> spot on. Now this is the really fun part. <clears throat> How do you get that out of there? How are you going to take that out? <clears throat> because that round saw blade will not <clears throat> will not cut that without cutting the big old slot. Yep. So <clears throat> gotta have something like a skill saw. You can use a wiggle saw. <clears throat> you can use a chip saw. <clears throat> you can use a good hammer. Just chip hammer. Away. How do you do that with a hammer? Well, <clears throat> this is really interesting. Here you are, <clears throat> if you hold the, if you put your your product project on a sturdy surface and make sure that that whole edge is going to be exposed, so that the table, see the difference there. So your line is going to be about at that edge of the table. <clears throat> you can give that a swift whack. And since your wood grains are all going that direction, this is just going to chip out of there. Just then you can take out. a rasp. You can take a rasp and clean that up. Yeah. Now what other people do, you can either use a table saw. Or you can use your skill saw just like you have been. <clears throat> and you can data that out. Which means just make multiple passes with your blade. Right, right. <clears throat> this is a soft enough wood that you can literally just Boom. hit it and it's gone. <clears throat> okay, well now I've got some fuzzies here. That's where you can fine tune it with your wiggle saw, which should be laying over there somewhere Let's on the see. floor. That long one. Yep, the long one there. Or you can use a jigsaw too, but the jigsaw is not going to reach deep enough. Get the long one there. Yep. <clears throat> so you get the bulk of it out of the way. <clears throat> then you get your little wiggle saw out. Don't want to go down like this. Yep. Now. One thing we got to make sure though too is we want to keep that as flat as possible. Awesome. Right. So vertical is kind of a pain in the neck to hold that. Horizontal kind of is too. But <clears throat> you can kind of gauge it a little bit better up and down if you're cutting it horizontally like this. sander it's feeling pretty smooth right there it's, it's kind of authentic to just leave it a little bit rough too because you know we're not perfect right right we're yeah. rough as well yep and you can see where we kind of blew out a chunk there on the back side just go ahead and remove that loose stuff that you have and then you can come back in here with your wiggle saw i call it a wiggle saw for lack of better definition <laughs> it's <clears throat> pity 
And you just just smooth that out just a little bit. The curls. <clears throat> Here's the thing, <clears throat> you know, we we may blow out a little bit on the sides there. It might not be perfectly flat and square and level. Well, we think it's pretty square, but not out here, no. The interesting thing about this <clears throat> is Jesus didn't die on this cross or die on the cross for perfection of us. He died on the cross to forgive us. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so with our blowouts and our imperfect planes and our misses when we miss the line, he miss forgives the us. He missed the target. He forgives us for those things. <clears throat> So, you can see we're just a little bit high there. We might be a little bit low there. But in an imperfect world, we got to try and do the best we can each time. We could totally test fit this too. Yep, we can test Even fit it now. with that piece sitting in there. <clears throat> and we can kind of decide if we want to use a rasp or a handbill to take some of that out. But why don't we go ahead and notch out <clears throat> this one, that one, and then we'll see what we've got. This right here. Put that back up there. Yeah, there you go. And and well. That's pointed right in the right spot. And then you saw what you did on the last one. <laughs> Step two. Step two. <laughs> <clears throat> Those queer over here. <laughs> so, here's that. Watch my blade.
down my strings. Tuck these in. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now on this side, wait, oop, that side. Perfect. There we go. <clears throat> Same thing, only different. Line it up. It's gonna be right there. Go ahead and get your hand out here and might be better. Okay. <laughs> Make it look easy. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Then we just clean it up, and there you go. Yeah, this side isn't too bad either.
<clears throat> now remember what you just did there with the sides, you trimmed that up. <clears throat> that other one was a little snug. <clears throat> you can literally use that same wiggle saw to loosen one of those lines or the other up. I wouldn't necessarily do both, but I'd pick one and <clears throat> if you could trim it down. enough real estate to get the thing to just slide together now. Mine. So <clears throat> we'll slide that, that this way, dump it out. And you may have to lay it over one side before the other. We may have to do some might, fine tuning. Yeah I think I might need to take just a hair off of this side too. If it's this one that's hitting, or if it's this one that's stopping it. Now we may just have to trim just a little bit more out of it. Because you want it to interlock pretty smoothly. And that's why I say a rasp or a file. <clears throat> I think I have one in the toolbox, let me see. Because you don't need to take too much, so you don't want to use your big saw blade. Right. <clears throat> you Just don't want to take bit. too little. Or, you know. <clears throat> see what I've got over here in this. Mm. <clears throat> this way. Got my 
curtain away. Just some really the car up so. <laughs> think it did, but these are a couple of little lots, so uh oh. Is that just okay that is measuring <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going down now. Starting to so we might have to alleviate. I'm gonna hit that side again. Twist it that way. There you go. up yeah. and maybe take some more off of that edge there as well. Rocky you need to go back in the house. Big troublemaker <laughs> you. Try to throw that circ saw blade across there again. <laughs> It'll make us a new line right along that edge. Try and just clear all that out. And then maybe take and make a new line on that edge and try to try to walk that edge with that circ saw. Get pieces here, so be careful to your Try and hit this side again with the blade too. And trick this time. Go ahead and pull this back and mm -hmm. hold that with your thumb. That'll let your blade pass through there without having to worry about it striking the side. But again, it 
exposes the whole bottom side of the blade. See how now you don't have that cap? Anytime you're doing edge work, just pull the battery out and we'll throw another one in it. Anytime you're doing edge work like that, be sure. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that one's got any life to it or not. Let's see if it does. Nope. All right. Might be one more there. That square one. That's probably dead. There's a square one on that bandsaw. And then there's probably around one or two down here. No, those are all squares. But anyway, maybe one of these will have something in it. Nope, okay, that one is dead too. <laughs> Which may be the case. <laughs> may be the case here today. Hey, this one has a light. Oh. <laughs> um, Hang on. If I there we go. go. Okay. The only really bad thing about doing that with the blade guard is that it exposes the entire blade. the finger remover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Don't want to do that. No. <laughs> so we can All right. see if she'll drop so, in there. Maybe those weren't dead and it was just stuck and didn't want to. Yeah. Now, as far as this goes, you can put some wood glue down in there before you assemble it. And you can literally clamp that together with a couple of those wood clamps. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Put some wood glue along on the face of that and that'll help bind that back together. And then whenever you seal it, that'll help Hold it all in. Help keep that all. Yeah. And you'll never that even know. That makes sense. See that probably almost just drop on there now, pretty close. Except for, I think now this one may need wood may need trim. to hit the same thing. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so you can go ahead and hit that one with the surf salt and do literally the same thing. Just take that edge off. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to count. Well, I can't see the line, but we can see. Exposing the uh, finger taker offer is always a <laughs> last resort. <laughs> last resort, but you definitely want to be conscious, consciously aware of what's been the fact that you're tripling your chances of injury.
It's like making sheets of paper for school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> now a guy can a guy could take and put a a window a shim edge in there. Right in there. Where you can drive pieces of your cut lumber off into it and break them off right at that line at that edge and that'll tighten it all up. I feel like hitting that part just Yep, that's alright there because you got a little nibble little piece in there, right? Piece, yeah. They have uh, wood wedges that you can put in there as well. For like shimming a window or a door, window shims. When you think about <clears throat> the imperfectness of man, but the perfect love. Spin this around so you guys can hopefully see it. Which way would be better for the face? That side or this side? to true up one end. There we go. Or find a good spot on the drive. <laughs> Heck yeah. So now we just gotta get some glue to fill this crack. Right here. Squeeze clamp it together. Okay. Would it be best to probably put some glue inside of this joint here? You can if you want to leave it permanently together. Oh, you definitely can. True, true. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> but if you want to be able to move it around, you want to find a way to just use wood shims to hold it, you know, yeah. tight and whatnot for the time being while you try to move it around. Or you can find a tree that's this big around and buy a chainsaw. Just make it that way. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking just set this on top of the X4. This would sit right up there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm sure we've got the clamps are probably in the house because I think I used them for they're out in the shop, in the sign shop, because we used them for the uh, <clears throat> canvas frames. Really long set there. The short set's out in the shop apparently. Yeah, I think, I think we'll call this the face of it. <clears throat> well, he's got the wood glue and everything out there in the in the sign shop. We may have to come back and get that here. Alright, well, there we go, guys. There's our cross. Get you guys a little close up, see 
you can see the imperfections that we've got. That's the crack we're going to try and fill with some glue. But, like Dad said, we're not perfect. Which makes this perfect. Oh, that's so cool. So this is going to be the face of it. You guys will see this in every video. It's, go it's coming, it's not going to happen just yet. But this is going to be in every single video. Because there is an intro video coming soon. So, if you guys, let's, uh, let's see if we can do this. Oh, that's too high. If you guys enjoy this video, if you like this process, I'll give a big thanks to my dad. Thank you, dad, for helping out. You're welcome. It means a lot. And you guys know what to do. Smash that thumbs up button. Drop us some comments. Let us know what you think or if you have any, any other ideas or projects kind of like this that uh, maybe you want to see. Uh, we can totally do it. Click that red subscribe. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day. God bless. <laughs> 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 what was that, Audie? <laughs>